And that's why Sin is one of those exotics that have been a game changer since the beginning of time and has always been a useful ally for all void based classes if you want to go for void loadout. I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk down about the exotic and its use, which is great, as just from experience, it really does shine in the most hardest contents around. Although better choices for exotics and certain scenarios are around, the OG exotic does what it does best, and that is grant us huge amount of ability cooldown. So I think you all know what's coming when I say that Void 3.0 has shone a light on how powerful the exotics can be in the right equipment, and today I will show you how to maximize that fully. Using Graviton's Lance, since that's another exotic that doesn't get praised enough, we will combine the two to create endless variability energy back to us, and each kill made will extend our duration for as long as possible. Now using Devour and Volatile Rounds as well will make your current weapon choice a threat to all combatants in game, and it's like watching the manifestation of Nesarak himself come true, truly frightening but also amazingly fun. If this has piqued your interest however, and you want more stuff like this in the future, then if you can leave a like, a sub and turn on your notifications, then I would really appreciate it. So for the subclass, we have the Cataclysm Nova Bomb, as it applies extra damage and coverage for when we need it most. This can be swapped, but honestly Nova is the best with its coverage and AoE effect. This however isn't the main point to focus on, the aspects are, as they would change up how the build plays and how much support it will provide to the other base mods and abilities applied. The Feed the Void allows users to get health back if a target is killed by a Void ability, and this can be further extended as long as you follow up straight after. Child of the Old Gods allows users to create a Void Soul that will track combatants, damage them, and drain them of their health and give back to you via grenades and melee energy. It will also give you class ability energy back as well if the Void Soul outright kills the combatant. The next your fragment should be as followed. Echo Remnants allows our grenades to stay out for longer. Echo Explosion allows Void's ability final blows to cause targets to explode. Echo of Undermining, where Void Grenades cause a weakening effect on combatants. And lastly, Echo of Reprisal, final blows when surrounded by combatants grant super energy back to you. This fully combined setup will allow you to keep your abilities refreshed and on top no matter how many combatants you face. When applying Nesrax to the build, you will also be able to enhance these areas further by simply getting Void Weapon kills. And this here will be key if you want to have constant wealth to drop, constant voice source to drop, constant healing to drop, etc. Basically, the more you kill, the more energy you get back, and from this energy you can then push your narrative further and repeat as many times as you like. I highly recommend you use Vortex Grenade with this, as its effect with the build is top notch. So, expanding on this area, I have invested in Discipline at 80, as this will be creating wells via the Elemental Orders mod. I then also recommend you do the same as the melee is good but not strong enough to pull through. From here we then have elemental armor so that our void weapons can create wells via our kills, a bountiful well which will extend our well drops from 1 to 2, well of tenacity for that extra 50% in damage reduction, although this can be swapped out for frontal might or frontal wisdom, and then lastly volatile flow which will grant volatile rounds for our void weapons. And let me tell you, volatile rounds on Graviton Lands is a thing of beauty. With how this build is designed, you'll never have to worry about when you'll be getting your next ability energy back as you can easily cover that with today's setup. Which is why in many cases you can keep a certain stat as low as possible as this can be covered by your abilities and exotics in play. So if you wanted to, you can have 50s in all stats and this will be enough for you to use in all content with ease. Really useful if you decide to play the raid and want a mass of all builds to carry through as not everyone has the time and day to create intensive builds. But to make the build even more effective, you'll need some good weapons to back it up, and I have some pretty good ones you can use. Priming wise, we have the Submission SMG from the raid with Encore, Demolitionist, and this Origin Perk, Soul Drinker, which allows us to get our health back on the number of hits made before reloading. If you ever do the raid at some point, then I highly recommend you try and get this weapon, as it's fantastic to use. A high rate of fire weapon with some good perks. This weapon ball can be used as fullest if you're in close range fighting or need a quick boost and grenade energy in return. And it also pairs up really well with what we have going, so it makes sense to use this weapon as shown. Now of course not everyone will have this though, so I do recommend you get the Ragnar D shotgun as a follow up as that's easy to get as well, and pretty easy to farm. For secondary, we have the Graviton Lance Exotic, a weapon that I love to use for its simple effects, but rarely used for how weak it felt on some combatants. Now however, the weapon feels great to use, and with this build in mind, makes using this weapon a whole lot of fun. Defeating combatants with the Void Projectiles will also add to the fast cooldown that Nesfax offers, 
so one void explosion can get you back your abilities if there's enough combatants to backfill you. Like I mentioned before, I recommend you apply the Volatile Flow mod with this weapon as the Void Explosion after the Void Explosion is a sight to see, and it's also useful against major combatants who want to weaken them quickly. Truthfully, any Void weapon is good here and you don't need to use Gravitom Lance only. Shura's Wrath, Telesto, Paladrome, Limonarch, etc are all good alternatives to use. For Heavy, we have the Power Maya B Rocket Launcher with Impulse Amplifier and Lasting Impression. However, there is nothing specific in this area you need to have to make this build work. You can add in whatever heavy you like to support to you, as it won't overall affect the build. For the stats, we have already established that Discipline will be your biggest priority in the build, as this will be triggering elemental wells that you can use to get your abilities back quickly and enhance other areas. Since we have a pretty good cooldown rate with the base stuff established, all you need to do is add in the following rest to support them as backup. Harmonic Siphon and Absolution will allow us to create orbs of power via our weaponry that are matched with our subclass type, and this will then follow up with Distribution and Bomber mods, two other mods that will grant us all round support for our abilities. This then leads us with the rest of the stats and what we could potentially do to improve them. Recovery at 60 is a good spot to have as the cooldown rate for the class is just fast enough that we can top it off with wells and the additional mods here and there. We can push it to 80, but only if you plan to use your wells non-stop, and to be honest, I don't think that is the case with this build unless you plan to use Child of the Old Gods perk for a constant debuff. Anyways, that's down to you, but understand the pros and cons to improve in this area if you wish. We then have Intellect which is at 14, and I don't plan to use my super constantly, but it will have some level of use against bosses to mini bosses when the time comes. We could increase this to 50 instead and add in the Fondal Wisdom mod for that plus 15 intellect as well, and that would be good enough as that would give you a max of 100 plus in stats for that duration the mods last. Although the much easier way to go about this would be to add in the Ashes to Ashes mod and just call it a day. I think this will strongly depend on the user and how active a role your super will be as you have multiple ways of going about this. I think generally we can end it there in terms of stat coverage as you should have a rough idea as to what you can expand on and how to go about it. It's all simply looking at what you desire the most and what you consider is the best plan of action. So for those that want this all simplified, here are the mods presented within a simple list. For head we have Discipline, Harmonic Siphon, Rocket Launcher and Refinder, an Elemental Armored mod, Arm we have Discipline and Bountiful Worlds mod, Chest we have Discipline, because of Dampner, Thermal Shot Plating, an Element of Orders mod, Leg with Discipline, Absolution, Rocket Launcher Scavenger, and Well of Tenacity mod, Bond with Mind of Zillions, Bomber, Distribution, and Volatile Flow mod. I have been quite surprised at how effective this build is when it comes down to annihilating everything on site. From looking at it, it doesn't look like anything special and just looks like your standard load that you'll see many players would simply equip. And yet, the moment you try on everything, and you go to town with it, your perspective for it completely changes. Constant healing, non-stop debuffing, 50% damage reduction, and loads of explosions will make you feel godly in any activity you decide to play in, including the dreaded PvP. Kind of similar to my Titan's Heart of Image light build, it's all about rotating your abilities to get the most out of it, and then supplementing the rest via mods, wealths, and weapon kills. The build allows your secondary weapon, or any weapon that has osmosis, to really shine in the face of danger as it relies heavily on their Zoraxan Solid Trait to kick in and keep the flow of battle going. In fact, a lot of the things that will be occurring within the build will be orchestrated by our Void weapon alone, so you'll get familiar with this setup in no time and still get a huge kickback from doing so. How this fares in the endgame is also interesting as it has a jack of all trades feel to it. Simply swapping out the unneeded mods for key mods that can stun champions, increase damage and reduce damage is all easily achievable with little requirements. From testing, it can do fairly well in the master or legend content, as long as you don't get greedy and as long as you net ability kills as you go along. The key to making it really work is to make sure you proc devour as much as you can and then support it with the wells so you can instantly get that damage reduction, even if it's for a short time. Timing your shots and making full use of your wells and cover can easily allow you to survive the most daunting content around. This means if you plan to replay the Witch Queen story on Legendary again, then this is the best build for that, especially if you plan to do it solo. 
how it affairs GMs is unknown, but I can see it being 50-50 and how the boss and his arena plays out. Like I said, your strength is within your grenades, weapons and devour perk, and as long as you proc that, then everything else will fall in line. This is overall a very interesting build to use and play with if you ever want to use the new Void 3.0 to its fullest. You can mix, match and try out a ton of things and either way you look at it, your results will change but the build will stay the same. Something I would suspect from a jack of all trade builds. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like, a sub and turn on your notifications and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny news and content. Once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.